Hey everyone, welcome to today's tutorial. Today we are going to be working with a company I haven't shown on the channel yet, and that is Doodlebug Designs. And we are going to be using the 12 by 12 paper pack called Winter Wonderland. It includes a sticker sheet along with 12 pattern papers. I also got some coordinating accessories, um, the odd and ends here, the uh, sticker sheet, and two, and then three of the little embellishments, but I don't end up using all of them so I will put a list of the of what I did use in the description below. I also used six sheets of cardstock, two blackberry swirl, um, two pool party from Stamping Up, and then one melon mambo and one gorgeous grape from Stamping Up as well. Okay so here we're just going to kind of go through the 12 different pattern papers. They are all different designs and uh, we will be needing 11 out of the 12 sheets of pattern paper. So we need one spare piece. Um, for my spare piece, what I want to do is take out like a journaling cards kind of paper so that we can use that as embellishments. So first off here, these two papers are glittery. Like they have like a rough um, sparkly kind of texture to them. It's very, very subtle and it didn't bother me that they were sparkly, but I didn't think it really added to the page either. Um, so here there is a few different, there's a striped paper, there's a squares paper, and then a 3x4 journaling paper. So I'm going to go ahead and use this 3x4 journaling to cut up as embellishments later. So that is going to be the page that I eliminate. So now that I have eliminated that page, I need the rest of these 11 pieces of paper. Um, for this cutting guide. So we are making six pages today. Okay, so this cutting guide is cutting guide B and we need five accent papers and six background papers. Um, so first of all, I, what I'm going to do is take out the papers that I think I might want to use for my backgrounds and that way it sort of is a process of elimination and there's less papers to pick from. It gets maybe a little bit less overwhelming to try and pick my accent paper. So my process, my thought process for picking these five background pages is that they're all directional. So if I were to, it just, um, directional papers are harder to work with as accent papers once you start cutting them up because, um, you know, they can look sideways or upside down potentially depending on what paper they're going on and how you're using it. So I picked those when I looked at the overall pages here, they all, all the pages actually do look really well together and they all, none of the pages really stand out as odd. So I went ahead and picked directional papers as my five background papers. I still need one more background paper. Okay, so step one for picking our five accent papers um, will be that you need accent paper M and O to coordinate well together. So when I look at my five papers, I wanna have ones that contrast enough to be used together, but yet look good with each other. So here I have sort of like a green based background and a white based background. And also this snowflake is a different pattern than the flowers. And the snowflake patterning is a bit tighter and it's a bit smaller than that green flower paper. Now, another thing to note with um, differentiating which paper you want as M and O is that accent paper M needs to be cut in a 0.75 inch strip to go onto our layout number one. So both of these actually would work well for that because you would see the pattern and it, it would look fine. But when you look at the back side of these papers, I think this green based background is better because it has a pattern on it as well that could work as a 0.75 inch strip. Whereas this this snowflake white paper here is actually like that those border strips on the background. Okay, so a second step is to pick a paper that stands out against everything. So for me, I always like a striped paper. So I went ahead and I picked this striped paper here as our accent paper Q. And then step three is to pick our accent paper N and our accent paper P. So accent paper N has to work well with our black cardstock because that's like our neutral cardstock. And I think that this white based paper here with the flowers works best with that black cardstock. I think it'll really pop off the page nicely and it coordinates all the different colors in the kit together. So this is gonna be my final, or this is gonna be my accent paper uh, N. 
And this is gonna go on layout number four and layout number five. Okay, so all I have left now is one accent paper and one background paper. So when I look at these two, both of them are, are snowflake pattern, but this green paper here, to me, is, is will work better as a background because it has those square shape, those two by two inch squares on the back, and I wouldn't be able to reverse that and use it on a page. So we're gonna go ahead and pick this pink cart, uh, pattern paper as our final accent paper, which would be accent paper P. We have cutting diagrams in my tutorial videos, and I just kinda wanna let you know how to read them. So there's the number and top in inches, and that's gonna be the size that we're gonna cut that cut piece into. And there's a number below it in a circle. So a lot of the times we're making four pages or six pages um, when we're using these cutting diagrams and all these cut pieces can sort of get very disorganized. So that number inside of the circle there represents a pile that you're gonna put that cut piece into. So for, pa for a four page tutorial, we're gonna make four piles. And for a six page tutorial, we're gonna make six piles. Um, so the numbers are gonna be either one through four or one through six. So page one is gonna have all the cut pieces that have a circle with the number one inside and so on and so on for the four or six pages. So now we're gonna go ahead and take all pieces of our cardstock and we are going to cut one inch in, one inch from the top and one inch from the bottom and we're gonna make a straight line on all four sides of, of each of these pieces of cardstock. What we're basically doing is cutting a 10 by 10 inch square out of the center of this piece of cardstock. The border is going to be put into our pile and the center, the 10 by 10 inch center is going to be put to the side and we're gonna be cutting it with another cutting diagram as soon as we're done cutting out all of these squares. Now we're going to go ahead and cut the backgrounds for our pages. So we are going to be cutting the barcode strip off along with half an inch and then half an inch on the other side. So we're going to be making an 11.5 inch by 11.5 inch uh, square for all of our background papers.
Okay, so we actually end up not using those shape sprinkles, the snowmen with the enamel, clear enamel dot looking things. And then the doodle pops, we only use the one with the snowman with the pink tube on. We don't use the one with the moose on it. Okay, as for everything else, I mean, this odds and ends um, die cut embellishment pack has a lot of embellishments in it. It's almost overwhelming. I really appreciated though the trees in it and the size that the embellishments were. There was some small items and then a lot of big items too which made it super easy to work with. Um, so today because the I did maybe I just didn't buy them but um, there isn't a lot for titling so what I'm what I did is I just pulled out some of that uh, green minty kind of colored uh, thickers that I had. I always like to keep spare thickers, especially neutral colored ones, um, just in a bin so that when I need to do some titling and I work with a collection that really doesn't have a lot of titling, I have that 
it makes it super quick and easy and if you don't want to like stockpile on like every color there is um, I do like just to stockpile like black or white because black and white can really go with anything I happen to have like a minty kind of colored uh, thickers that I've used before actually um, but I had some some letters and stuff available on it still so I went ahead and used that today in our pages so this page here, I wanted to incorporate those mountains just because there's trees in the background paper. And this is just going to kind of be like a general winter page out here. Um, sometimes the kids will go GTing behind the snowmobile. So it was nice just to incorporate some of those trees. Um, this little moose character, uh, a few more trees, a little that little fox there, and the snowmobile as well. So and then the, I didn't really want to do a lot of journaling on this page. Uh, make it kind of just fast and easy. So I just uh, popped up this little title in here that says friends and we kind of just left this page at that. I added um, that little bird in there as well. Okay so for our next page here, our page number two, we are going to be making, I wanted to incorporate the trees again and this one um, again just like a winter page. Uh, we had went for a walk outside. So um, and so what I did is I incorporated a title that said walk in it as well. So I wanted, what I wanted to do was just use the trees to kind of frame and fill up this area. And the trees are quite large, so it didn't take a lot. Um, because this layout does have a lot of blank area underneath that four by six photo. So what I went ahead and did is I directly adhered that moose character and that tree on the left side of that 4x6 photo and then I popped up this uh, sticker that says baby it's cold outside and then I framed that with two popped up trees as well and at the top I put a little tab that says family and then just um, directly adhered to the page a little owl and tucked it underneath the 4x6 photo area and then um, this I popped up this little fox character to put below that tree and just the way that I laid everything out I felt like it sort of gave it a little bit of depth and made it look like there was some height differences nothing was really in a straight line I originally had thought about putting the word hike but hike doesn't seem as much of something that you do in the winter time and um, I was gonna put the date in there but then I like the idea of putting this word that says walk and then um, there's a little center, uh, a little sticker strip that says winter on it. So I popped up this little word that said winter so that it would say winter walk. And then I thought it needed a little bit more pink going on right there. So I just put a little snowflake, a tiny little snowflake from the sticker sheet um, that was pink. Okay, this would be layout number six in cutting guide B and this page always has a lot of area to fill so there's only one four by six photo but I do like to have only one photo on a layout sometimes and what's nice about this one is that you have that 10 by 10 inch spare piece of cardstock so if you wanted to convert this layout to have more pictures on it. You could easily do that, do that by matting a bunch of smaller photos, like three by four photos, or even two by two photos, three by three photos, and putting them alongside or around this four by six photo area. You can easily add those photo mats to this page um, and add more photos and then cluster around that as well. I mean, it's definitely an accommodating layout to do something like that. So there was a lot of those um, like snowman like yetis kind of in the background so I kind of wanted to incorporate some of those images towards the front again this just being like some a random winter layout um, just for some candid winter photos like you know those pictures when you take maybe a picture a headshot of your kid dressed up in all of his winter gear or he has frost on their face or um, or sometimes my youngest will get home off the bus 
and we'll have like a little snow hill from clearing the driveway and he'll run out there and he'll just play on the snowbank and uh, just like little moments like that like you know these kind of uh, layouts don't have to necessarily be like about something specific so um, a layout like this would work perfect for little moments like that now it was like this is my last winter layout that I'm working on before I move on to other things and I'm so glad because I am done with winter like I am from Alberta Canada so it can get really cold here in the winter and winters can be really long um, last week and the week before that our kids actually were home from school not because of the snow day that's usually a March thing um, but because it was so cold uh, the windshield with the windshield um, there was a few days where it felt colder than minus 50 and that's in Celsius so I'm not sure what that would be in Fahrenheit and it was like you went outside and your face your face like would tingle and get it would actually hurt because it was so cold so yeah I'm super grateful because this week the weather is like it's still below zero but it's is much much nicer um, so yeah I'm I'm done with winter I'm I'm really glad that this is my last winter layout because it's actually really cute and fun and bright and um, speaking of winter layouts I know this is a winter wonderland and this is like a winter pack but this page I actually decided um, to make this an Easter layout so Easter for us is usually like muddy and it's like what we call what we would consider springtime so it's like nice outside is muddy things are thawing out um, like at our house you know that's when like calving is it just seems like um, all the winter blues are sort of going away so Easter time is really it's bright and fun and there was there seemed to be a lot of like snowy kind of rabbits in this uh, in this kit as well so I was like why not make an Easter layout so I went ahead and used this one I know there's like five pictures on this layout so it works perfect because Easter we take a lot of pictures and we have a lot of company and, and visitors over so I went ahead and used my Fickers to um, make a title that says Easter on it and I played around with it I wanted to do it in an angle at first and I didn't really like how that was looking so I straightened out my black piece of cardstock I did decide to put that black cardstock there that was just a spare piece cut from the um, that was a spare piece that was left over from cutting up all of our papers and so I decided to make it straight and I decided to make it overlap that black cardstock just so you could see it a little bit easier um, it wouldn't have stood out against that flower background as much and I purposely put it a little bit high so that I could put this um, word that says fun underneath it in, a, in pink so it says Easter fun as my titling and then I just clustered around it with a bunch of flowers with those rabbits and then at the bottom I put a tree with a fox surrounded by some flowers as well and then I popped up this arrow that says love this pointing to the one picture I know it was kind of random to do that as an Easter page but it just kind of came to me as I was building the pages so I kind of um, now I'm gonna have to kind of refigure out some pictures but that's okay I can definitely work that out and I'm gonna have more than enough winter pages anyways okay so this layout here I find the most difficult of the six pages to work with this page Need, you need to use the embellishments to balance out the page and I um, whereas the other ones just look good before you even put embellishments on so I struggled really bad with trying to get different heights and different cluster areas here um, I don't like to put everything in sort of a linear a linear way unless like you I strategically do it that way so I'm trying to like offset the different heights of the different uh, embellishments so I ended up deciding that it wasn't working what I was doing so then I moved that 4x6 photo area down to create a cluster area at the top 
and then I just decided that one element was good enough to stick out of that 4x4 photo on the on the side and then just have one element stick out of that 4x4 photo on the top okay um, so that those mountains I love them I think they make a great layering piece they are make a great base to put other embellishments on top of it um, but you kind of have to play around with it a little bit because sometimes elements are too big to go up against a background like that and sometimes they're too small because you kind of want it to look like it has perspective but here at the bottom I put I popped up this titling here that says winter wonderland and put these two skis behind it that say winter and I love that moose that sticks out not that the moose really have anything any um, particular you know they're not it's not like we have moose out our backyard every day I mean we do have them once in a while but I just thought that they made a nice contrast with that brown color to the rest of the colors on the page so it made um, and it looked cute sticking out from that 4x4 photo there okay so I decided to eliminate that moose on the top I feel like if I had a brown piece there and a brown piece at the bottom I need one more brown piece and I didn't really want to do that so I replaced that brown moose with a that blue snowman I made sure to pop it up though in front of that tree and when you make clusters that have perspective like that with the background with the mountain and then the forefront with that bear just play around with it and make sure it it looks the way you want it to and it'll take some practice to start like learning like the heights and the how you want maybe like the layering to look like depth like a, a scene um and you'll you'll get it once you start playing around like that and for our final layout here which would be our layout number one i want it to be all about snowmen because i had so many snowmen left and I needed another random winter layout. So I went ahead and clustered. I just started placing snowmen on the page and then I ended up liking what it looked like. So then I just went ahead and stuck them down. Um, I really like that three by four journaling guard card that says, do you want to build a snowman? And I use that as sort of my titling or my, my lettering for uh, this page. And then I popped up that um, sticker that says hooray for snow and I put that at the top of the 4x6 photo. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this week and next week we're going to move on to something new, um, something different, something that's not about winter and about snow and about Christmas. So we will see you next Friday with a new video and I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much for watching.